Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and hopefully you enjoyed that sequence there that I just sort of showed off. That was all shot with the DJI Mavic Mini 3 Pro. Just near my house one day, the sun came up and it was just this most beautiful sunrise in the winter where it was like really cold as well and there was a nice bit of fog. And all that was graded using Resolve and Dehancer Pro. And today I kind of want to take you through that plugin. Uh, I want to be really honest and upfront with you. Dehancer, the team behind Dehancer reached out to me a long time ago now to make this review and I've been dragging my heels for a long amount of time because I've never been a massive fan of film emulation plugins. But anyway, eventually I did end up trying this plugin and I've actually been surprisingly impressed with it. Obviously you can make your own decision whether or not you think it's worth the price. Dehancer are not paying me for this review so I can sort of say whatever I want. Obviously there's that sort of yeah, conflict of, hey, you know, I can sell uh, and, and make money off, off people buying the plugin. But I wanna be very clear and upfront with you, even though there is an affiliation and there's a promo code there, I don't make my money from YouTube. I make my money from actually doing video work outside of YouTube. So again, if you decide it's worth it and you wanna help out the channel, you can you know, purchase it using the promo code. You can have a look at the plugin here. You can download it yourself and I definitely recommend doing that too. But anyway, uh, with that all out of the way, let's dive in. All right, so we're in the color page now of Resolve and I wanna show you how I can grade this particular clip using Dehancer and also just the basic tools in Resolve as well. Dehancer actually does have a workflow which would actually allow you to go ahead and grade a clip from start to finish. Uh, but I'll show you why potentially that's not always the best thing. It doesn't give you the most amount of control, but it is obviously a nice feature to have. So to start off with what I usually end up doing is I will create a node and just go ahead and create some uh, adjustments to our exposure in terms of our shadows and our highlights. Um, you know, in this case, the hearts are actually sitting okay. I could obviously adjust the mids if I want it to be a little bit darker in those mid-tones there. And I usually end up adding a color boost uh, amount as well to this decine like footage. Uh, and let's just say, for example, like I'm happy with this particular grade. Uh, as you can tell from what we had before, it's a massive difference and we've just done that quickly with some very minor adjustments. But I think we could take this a step further and we could obviously use our Dehancer plugin to start to develop a little bit of a look and emulate film. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over the effects here. I'm actually gonna jump out of here, create a new node. And in my effects, I'm gonna add Dehancer. And now straight away, Hopefully you could tell on this particular screen. It's gone ahead and added a bunch of film grain. It's changed the color. What I'll do is I'll take you through from start to finish and sort of briefly explain along the way, maybe some of the features here, which will help you out in terms of creating your own looks and uh, using this particular plugin. But it all starts off with the input. Now, what's really cool about this is, as I said, if you have something that's in a log format, for example, I shoot a lot of my stuff on Sony in S-Log3, uh, what I would actually do is I would go here and I would choose a camera I would select Sony and I could even, you know, just choose my camera here. So FX6, FX3, A7S3. And then from there, that's basically gonna apply a transform. And then I could do things like adjust the exposure compensation, the white balance, uh, and also things like defringing, which is interesting as well. So if you have a lens with sort of chromatic aberration, um, you can adjust that too to try and, uh, I guess, fix that before you go into the film process, the film processing part of this plugin. So in this case, I've just got, you know, something I've already transformed myself. So I'm gonna keep it as Rec 709. As we go further down, we get to the meat of the plugin. I think the biggest thing for me is these film profiles. Now, they've got a lot of different film profiles here. And the only thing that kind of annoys me about this plugin is you kind of don't have the option to sort of cycle through them easily. You kind of have to just like, click and then click the next one and then click the next one. I kind of wish I could select it and, and go between them. But this kind of gives you a good idea of all the different plug, like all the different film looks that are available. And you can kind of see on the left-hand side here how much the image is changing every time I kind of choose a different profile. They all look really great. And the one I ended up using for my project was Fuji Chrome Velvia 100, I believe. So what I really liked about this is you can tell it takes a lot of the reds out of the image. It kind of enhances the greens and the, and, and the blues kind of come down a little bit as well. Um, so I really love this particular look. What's really cool as well is you can adjust things like the push and pull, but effectively adjusting the push and pull will affect how the image is processed through this film emulation pipeline. And this is something that you're gonna find through this plugin is that there's a lot of different sort of features of it, which are really well thought out and kind of thought around the, the sort of perspective of emulating actual, the actual film process. And it, 
as someone myself who's actually never worked with film before, I grew up in a digital age. I've never been one to sort of like idolize the film look per se. I think the biggest thing for me with film is the way it ha um, handles highlights and highlight roll off. I think that's the one thing that I've always tried to chase because I grew up in an era of, of sort of the uh, this particular digital camera where it was limited dynamic range. And if you had your really bright brights and dark darks, it was just a very harsh cutoff from black to white and absolutely really didn't like that look. It was the one big dead giveaway that you'd shot on digital rather than film. But otherwise the looks and everything else, it's it's some, not something that I've actually had a lot of experience, like physical experience with. Obviously I've watched a lot of video content on it and seen a lot of people talk about film and how they love that particular processing. But for me, this is all just, hey, do you want something to look like Fuji Chrome Velvia 100? I've never worked with Fuji film, like Fuji Chrome Velvia. You know, I don't know what that's supposed to look like, but I can definitely see that it's a way that I can create a look. And I think the really cool thing about film, you know, looking at it now, is that you realize that there's a number of different steps to the process. So it's not just about getting a, a film LUT and applying a simple transform to one node on your timeline. It's actually about being able to work through a process where you know you could shoot on a particular film stock that has a look, but if you overexpose it, that's gonna be a different look than if you underexpose it. And then depending on how you print that film or how it goes through the camera, that could also affect the look of it as well. And as you can see through this plugin, it does all sort of show you, you can really have a lot of different control points along the way to kind of emulate that process. So for example, I could adjust this so it's, you know, obviously a much higher sort of brightness and, and less color contrast, which this might be a bit too heavy to be honest, but again, like this is just a look that I can have. If I kind of put it back in the middle, maybe I just want it a little bit more than that, right? I can also change things like the black and white points. So if I really want it to be a lot darker, for example, or I want that, you know, those the bit more milky sort of shadows, I can do that as well. Can adjust the white point again that's going to be a little bit too heavy so in this case i'm kind of happy with how it's sitting i might just increase the whites just slightly the print is actually how you're printing the film so once you've actually taken it how do you how do you kind of where are you printing it to and you've got a couple of different profiles here you've got like a log profile print film and there's also glossy paper Again, you can have control over the exposure, over the tonal contrast, over the color density. And all of this stuff is kind of on top of uh, what you've just done with the film emulation, the input controls. So it's kind of going along the lines now. We're just going dit, dit, dit. We've now printed it. I can, I can enable or disable a lot of these things. I can then change things like the color head. So this is like your, your printer lights, basically. I can go ahead and you know, increase a bit more to blue or a bit more to yellow, for example. Same thing with magenta and green. I can adjust these things so they're, you know, going one way or the other. Now, can you do this without the plugin? You absolutely can. Uh, in Resolve, you even have an option to use printer lights here and a function to use printer lights, which I really love doing. Um, and I really love it as a way of kind of controlling the, the look of the image. But here in Dehancer, what I really love about it is it's kind of following on from this whole process of Okay, film emulation, where's it printed to? Okay, now we're talking about our color heads and, and the actual printer lights themselves um, as a part of this process, not just as a separate node, but as a kind of like, a, again, a way of thinking about how would this actually be processed in real life if I was using film. Now, film grain for me has <laughs> always been the biggest kind of, uh, I've never been a big film grain person. and. I think the number one reason for that is I grew up in an age, again, of digital. And when it comes to digital and film grain, not always the best of friends. Um, film grain is a beautiful element of film. And I think in the past, it's been really difficult to create realistic film grain. Uh, often you will find you can just download film grain. So someone's taken a film camera and a film stock and they've probably put a lens cap on and just basically film the grain and they've taken that grain and you can just put on your own projects. But the problem with that is it doesn't really emulate how film grain works. Film grain isn't just a layer applied over the top of the image. Film grain is actually a part of the image itself and it sort of reacts in different ways in different parts of the image. And so to get realistic film grain is really challenging. And on top of that, what's really tough with film grain is that it effectively 
you know, once you apply it to your image, it might look really nice right now on my, my computer at the moment. But once I upload it to YouTube, YouTube's gonna compress it. YouTube's gonna take similar blocks of sort of colors and basically make them one color. And, and what that does is it causes, causes what's called macro blocking, which is that sort of really ugly, harsh looking noise that doesn't look very natural. It no longer looks like film grain. So I feel like quite often in the past, I've definitely moved away from, from using film grain for that reason. And even right now, I feel like on my current project, this is just way too much, and I, you know, Obviously, it just depends on your own kind of, uh, you know, your own tastes and everything else. But for me, like as I said, I've just never been a massive film grain person. I will say, and based on reading the manual for Dehancer as well, what I really love is the fact that it does, they've gone to great lengths, not just to go ahead and apply a layer of film grain over the top, but it basically is telling me that it's reconstructing the image and it's going ahead and putting those, the, the grain, into the shot rather than again, just applying it over the shot. Whatever that means, I mean, I can definitely see that you've got a lot of control here. I even love the fact that you can kind of choose it to be positive or negative. So again, it starts off by default as negative, um, which might be better for something that's like a bit of a darker scene, but moving it to positive, you can see that the noise kind of goes away really quickly. And I wonder if I can just scroll in here the noise becomes a lot more subtle. And I really like that because that to me feels much more natural, especially for a well-lit scene. You're not gonna see a massive amount of noise in the highlights of the of the uh, sky, for example, unless of course, you know, that's that's the actual look of the, of the camera and the film stock. So you can kind of choose things like film resolution, which will go ahead and adjust things like your sharpness. So if you go to 100% on the film resolution, you're gonna get the sharpest image possible with the film grain but again, that might look less realistic than sort of bringing it back down and sort of blurring out the image a little bit because you might expect the film grain to kind of create a little bit less sharpness, for example. You could also adjust how much is in the shadows, midtones, and the highlights. Um, and you can also do either analog or digital processing. Uh, analog is the more realistic kind of look. Digital processing is trying to save your system resources. Now, as we get further down, we get to my favorite parts of this plugin, which is the halation and the bloom. So one thing I've gotten really used to doing, uh, and as I sort of spoke about before, one of the biggest things with film is its transition from light to dark, from highlights to shadows, um, and having the massive amount of latitude there. And often we find in digital, because we're dealing with less dynamic range, we have harsher transitions from bright to dark. Having said that, cameras are getting better. Um, even cheaper cameras these days can do really well in sort of handling those highlights. The Ari Alexa kind of being the biggest, um, you know, gold standard in the digital sensor of, of how you handle those highlights and, and that, that roll off. But in this case, you can kind of do something a little bit similar by using halation and bloom. Now, what I like the most about this part of the plugin is you actually have the option to go and enable what's called mask mode, which shows you what parts of the image are being affected. So for example, if I go ahead and turn on the amplifier here, you can see that that tree that we're looking at in the middle here is mostly being affected. So once I turn this off and I enable dis and disable it, you can see it's a subtle effect, but it's kind of nice that it's again, just taking the brightest parts of the image and it's going ahead and just enabling a little bit of halation around those areas. And I really love that. I mean, that's probably a little bit intense and I'm just doing it now to sort of illustrate what it looks like and trying to you know, push it a little bit more because I, I wanna make sure you can see it on YouTube. Um, I can barely see it here because I'm looking at a 14 inch screen so far away. But again, you can do a lot here. You can diffuse it a little bit more. You can amplify it. You can uh, you know, change the hue of it as well. So you've got a lot of control and the same goes with the bloom. So if I enable the, the uh, you know, mask mode for the bloom as well, I can go ahead and I can adjust things like details, Again, I can amplify it if I really want a lot of bloom. Saturation, I can just pull it out so it's, it's not a saturated bloom, for example. And also just things like impact. So if I wanted to make it less or more, and if I turn this off, you can see that in this case, I think this looks really nice. I mean, this is obviously personal preference. And this, again, it's quite intense. But given we're dealing with a shot here, which is, which is fog, um, the idea of having some bloom in the shot kind of makes sense. It's almost like having a uh, you know Promis filter on top of of the camera, but given it's a Mavic Mini 3 Pro, I'm not going to put a put a <laughs> Promis on it because I'm going to fall out of the sky. 
So again, I think that's a little bit intense and I would definitely tone it down, but just to give us an idea of what we've done on this particular node, you know, we've obviously blown out, blown it out quite a lot. And I, I think I'm just doing this again, just to sort of illustrate how the plugin works and what it does just for dramatic effect more than just actual grading. But I, you know, again, I'm really happy with, with what I'm able to achieve with this plugin. You can do similar things within Resolve, obviously not necessarily the film profiles per se, but Halation and Bloom, you could add a glow. I believe there is a Halation plugin in, in Resolve as well, which I've used before in the past. Having it all here and having this process, uh, I actually, again, really like just even from a, from a sort of just a, a mindset standpoint of how you're thinking about your processing your video. Um, is a little bit more personal than just adding nodes and adding different effects. And it kind of makes you think about, okay, well, if I'm trying to emulate the film look, these are the kind of components that make it up. I've also got a vignette as well. Um, and vignette, I wish there was a mask mode, to be honest, something similar to a mask mode. I mean, that's probably my one bit of feedback here is that again, like I'd have to probably go all the way down and increase the size, you know, change the feather and you can kind of see what it's doing. The center is also like really strange because it doesn't actually allow me to, it doesn't really allow me to adjust it really easily. Like I'd actually have to go zero it out. I, you know, I wish that was a gain, like a slider control. I don't know why it isn't. Um, but if I feather that out again and I maybe adjust the exposure so it's not too dark, that's a nice subtle vignette. And again, nice and easy. I can do it on the same, on the one node. Things like Film Breath and Gate Weave, I don't tend to use very much because these parts of the plugin are a bit more like, okay, one frame, there's gonna be like massive exposure and tonal contrast shifts. And this kind of emulates, you know, uh, issues with the with the film processing, whether it's like, you know, actual, actual processing itself, or let's say here with the Gate Weave, this might've been like, you know, issues with the actual projector or the, the film camera, the shutter. Um, you can kind of see that it's like, okay, cool. Now it looks like we're some crazy weird horror movie. Um, yeah, not going to use that a lot to be honest, but it is something again, nice to have and something that you could do with film either intentionally or unintentionally. And then as we head down to the end of this plugin, what I really love is you've got an option for false color. Now, originally, I was going to sort of make this a bit more of a negative and I was going to say, well, you know, I love the false color, but I don't like applying the entire Dehancer plugin to just see false color. Like it's a little bit intense that every time you apply it, you get all the defaults enabled. You have to jump in, you have to turn them all off from enabled to off. And then you just have to go down to false color and turn it on. And then as I was reading the user guide, thankfully, uh, Dehancer again, recognized this and they were like, well, we've actually made this a separate plugin. So if you just want to use false color, you don't have to go ahead and apply the entire Dehancer plugin. And I was like, thank you. Thank you very much. So again, I love how people are actually thinking about how people would want to use this in a professional workflow. And they know that, yeah, having false color is nice, but potentially you don't always want to use it with the entire Dehancer workflow. So I love having the false color there. Uh, now, Again, you've got things like total impact. So if you wanna go ahead and reduce it a little bit, maybe just make it a little bit less intense, um, you can do that really easily. Now, as you can see, the options here is by default, it's set to normal fast, but you can also do high, high quality processing, which is a little bit slower. Um, this MacBook handles it all right. It's actually sitting at about 17, 18 frames, but that's definitely not 25, which is what the timeline is actually set to. So. You can imagine like on a less powerful computer, uh, it's gonna use a lot of processing. You might wanna keep that on normal fast processing and it's gonna sort of get back up to around the 21, 22 frame, frames per second mark. But what I love here, is, and again, it's just sort of justifies it to me as a bit more of a professional plugin, is you've got a LUT generator, which effectively allows you to export a LUT out to use for referencing. And their whole thinking behind this was if you're working with a digital imaging technician or you're on set and you want to sort of develop a look beforehand and then monitor that look on set, you can go ahead and export the LUT out from here and then take that with you. You don't have to take the whole laptop and you know run Dehance the entire time, which would just obviously take a lot of system resources, might not even be possible. Um, so Again, you've just got a lot of flexibility and professional options through this plugin, which I really love. Now, do I think this plugin is worth the price? Uh, I think it's, of course, gonna come down to you and what you like to do um, and whether this is a way you would like to work. 
I really love this plugin for the fact that it is well thought out, it's professional, it has a lot of different film stocks which are available that you can emulate. Uh, and if you are sort of creating a, uh, you know, a film look, this is something that uh, I think is, is really, you know, really gonna help you out to do it in a, in a nice, easy way and also use it in a bunch of different ways, including again, that false color plugin. So hopefully this has helped some of you out if you are looking at something like this, if you want a way to sort of, uh, again, dehance your footage, if you wanna make it look a little bit more like film, I think this has given me a really good education on how film works as well, which is kind of weird. Like I would never suggest buying a plugin because it's educational, but um, you know, if that's something again that gives you this mindset of, well, film is more than just uh, a look, film is a process. And I think that's what I really love about this is it kind of, Dehancer has taken that process and put it as a, as a single plugin, as a pane there that goes from start to finish. And you can go along that and sort of enable and you know disable what you don't need and want. So I think for a lot of what I did with Through the Fog is that I didn't enable film grain. I just, again, knew it was gonna be on YouTube, knew that if I didn't do it exactly right for each individual shot, and you know even if I dialed in this really minor film grain, probably wasn't gonna get seen uh, on the final clip. And worst case was gonna show up as macro blocking and compression, which would just really ruin the whole experience. Just turned it off. But in some cases you might want that. In other cases you might not want the film emulation and you can just turn that off entirely. In some cases you just might wanna go ahead and, and sort of have the impact be a little bit lower. And in other cases you wanna have that impact just set to 100 and really just kind of grade off dehancer entirely. I will say the biggest concern for me is just again around how intensive the plugin is. And I have noticed people suggest that the plugin does slow them down a little bit um, in terms of just processing. Uh, I would say that again, it's really good to download a trial, see how it works for your footage, because yeah, it, that could be probably the one biggest downside here is that if you do have a slightly slow computer, you're using very beefy footage and codecs which require a lot of processing power, adding this on top is probably just gonna slow it down even more. So just be careful there. Uh, otherwise, I've been really happy with this plugin. I really, you know, like the people behind it as well. I think they're very, um, they're very thoughtful, and they've really developed a great plugin here, which a lot of people can use to create some pretty amazing looks. That, you know, might be fairly difficult to do just on Resolve itself, given that you'd have to add a bunch of OFX plugins, and without knowing the kind of process of film itself, you're not thinking about, okay, well, I, I want to do this first. I want to apply the look of the film. Okay, now I can adjust color contrast because that's going to affect the way the film looks. Um, a lot of it's just going to take, it's just going to be way too time consuming on a regular basis to do it often. And having a plugin like this really helps. So if you like the plugin and you want to purchase it, you can actually get it for a little bit cheaper, 10% off using the promo code down below. Um, please, as I said, only if you feel like it and you want to purchase the plugin, it is a little bit more expensive, especially when you think about Resolve, you know, being more expensive than Resolve itself. But if you are using it for professional use, you are making money off what you do, um, I can definitely see that as a worthwhile investment. And I'm kind of glad it's not a subscription service just yet. Knock on wood. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video and stay well till then. I remember what it was. for the life of me, cannot remember.